Um, let's see. Oop. Let's see. Hold on one second. I didn't just get out of here, did I? Can you see? Me? Can you still see me, John? I can see a. Uh, You're uh, frozen. Frozen uh, version. Yep. Of you, yeah. There we go. Okay. I hit the share and it went to some wonky other screen. All right. You should be able to see my background. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So um, I'm going to go over Scan Genie really quick for those of you who are not familiar with it. Uh, Scan Genie um, is one of these really neat tools that uh, has the parameters set in the on the back end. So all of you know, if you've been out scanning at least once, that you need to memorize or at least have a cheat sheet of uh, the sales rank parameters that you want to follow. Um, so what Scan Genie does is it actually puts those parameters in on the back end. So I'm going to actually uh, go scan a few things. But what, what I like to do is in, in Walmart, because a lot of the UPC codes don't match the Amazon listing, we still have to go into Seller Central um, to, to see uh, what all, you know, if the UPC doesn't match and we want to look it up, we have to either type it in or do um, a reverse search or something like that. So let me go ahead and just show you. Let's, I actually haven't even scanned these yet. Um, these are some random shirts at Walmart. Um, let's see, that is a crazy high rank. Oop, I just totally messed up their rack. So you see where it says no products found. The reason it's doing that is uh, for one of two one of two reasons, and that's because it is either um, not on Amazon at all. Uh, like this one, it showed up. It says the rank is too high um, because it's two million in apparel. Um, so let me just explain what we're looking at here. Um, the the it's shown the the rank is too high or unavailable because um, again, I I don't want to go up to that high of a sales rank in apparel. Uh, so on on the back end of here, the product has to be under a certain sales rank and within a certain um, profit. Uh, amount and a certain ROI. Um, so this shirt, uh, it, again, it's rejecting it. It's saying don't buy it because the rank is too high or unavailable. So the real beauty with Scan Genie is that you can hand Scan Genie to um, your shopping team or um, your mother-in-law or your husband or wife or whatever, and they may not even have to know that much about Amazon. And you can just say, look, whenever you get that green bar up top, which we're going to see here in a minute. Um, as long as the price tag is under what it's suggesting to buy it at, then you will be, uh, you'll be good to go. So, um, and that may not make total sense right now until I actually find something that has a, a green bar. So let's see if we can get something. John Paul, you want to add anything into that while I'm doing this? Well, yeah, I mean, um, there's there's a whole back end uh, part of Scan Genie that lets you uh, set up all your parameters. Uh, and if if we want to, we can go look at that here in a little bit too. But I mean, um, that the idea behind it though is you you come up with all of your, your parameters that you want. So if you want to have a particular rank uh, in a particular category, and you want a, a certain ROI for that uh, uh, for that range of ranks, hey, you found something. There you um, go. Then uh, you can. You can put that in the back end though, and then when you're out scanning, you don't have to really think about you know rank having a, a list of rank tables or uh, having to do any any math in your head. Uh, scan Genie takes out care of all the math for you. So, yeah, and and one of the things too. So I have a, a team of shoppers that go out. So my my parameters are fairly conservative, uh, meaning that so like on, on this particular product, it's ranked at 176 thousand in apparel. Uh, it's in the point own oh, top point. 1% basically of apparel um, and there's 10 sellers and it's saying to buy it at $2 and 15 cents and um, Down here at the bottom where it says list price. That is what it's selling for on Amazon So it's currently being sold for $12.94 after the Amazon fees. That's the gross We would get $7 and 15 cents and for me my minimum profit is $5 again because we have a, a team of shoppers that go out and we also outsource our prep so we're not we're not doing all that work ourselves we've got a little bit more expenses that we incur so um i, I just set my bar at you know let's not buy anything below five dollars um well that oh did we lose you paul 
think we might have. Uh oh. Oh, can you hear me? There you are. You're back. Um, it's Walmart where I'm in a I'm in a metal box. I can't help it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so y'all good? Yeah, we can hear you now. Uh, You're good. Okay, so. The, the last thing I was just saying is I would have to buy this for $2.15 in order to get $5 in profit. Um, and if I did that, my ROI would be 232%. Um, John Paul, you want to add anything to that or did I do a good job explaining that? No, I, mean, I think you explained it pretty good. I mean, uh, I guess the, uh, you know, your, your ROI, I'm guessing is probably not your normal ROI is not 232%. It's just uh, because no. you have that minimum profit set that overrides whatever your ROI uh, you're you're asking for, Stanjian to give you on that that particular item. So um, yeah. that, that's why you're getting that odd ROI amount there, though. So that is true. So I can actually buy this shirt for four dollars and ninety seven cents. So technically, I would make like two bucks on the sale um, if I did buy this shirt. Um, and then one other thing that uh, is really neat about this is there's all these quick links so I can go and I can check my restrictions really quickly and say, okay, hey, great. I am able to sell this in new condition. And then I can also check Keepa really quick as well and see uh, what the price fluctuations are and all that good stuff with Keepa. I'm not gonna dig into how to read a Keepa chart right now. Um, or anything like that, but um, you always you do always want to check Keepa, and then there's Camel, Camel, Camel. Um, I can go and check the Prime sellers and look at uh, at their prices. So the lowest is twelve ninety four, and then you know you can see how that price goes up, and and then used, which we're not going to look at, but um, if you were doing used books, there is that option, and then there's our settings. So let's say. I was actually going to be paying sales tax and my sales tax was 5%. Um, and then, but I also got a 25% off um, on the sticker price. Then if I go back, it says to buy it at $2.74. The tax is included uh, with a 25% discount. So uh, that was a super quick run through of the settings. Um, so hopefully we can go and, and keep watching that get applied. So you can turn it off on and off really quickly. So like if you're in a, in a liquidation store um, around in the South, there's one called Dirt Cheap. Um, you know, in that store, you'll see, you know, something will be 40% um, uh, off. And then the thing right next to that might be 60% off. And then the thing next to that might be 75% off. And so instead of doing all that math, you can just quickly go into the settings and this will actually tell you what you need to buy it at um, in, in order to make a, a certain ROI with the discount included. Anything that y'all want to add to that? Can you still hear me okay? Yeah, good. I will say I do like how the Keepa chart populates right as you scan it on that first screen. That's really cool. Yeah. Ooh, y'all need Jesus. <laughs> this, this looks like a winner. Um, so I can actually, again, these shirts are all five bucks at Walmart. So this would make three bucks on the sale. And you can see that nice active keeper chart there. Um, and I don't have a shopping cart, but if I did, these would go in there. Um, just because, again, if I'm the one that's, that's doing that prep um, and work, then it, it makes a lot of sense to do that. Um, and so the ROI would still be over 50% technically, but again, with my, with my uh, parameters in there, um, that's why that's like that. Another thing too that I like to do with clothing. So I just scan the large instead of scanning every single size. I just go to the Amazon listing and I hit select size. I'm also seeing that there's no other, uh, variations as far as like design goes and style, but just size variations. So I can actually pick out, um, the variations that sell for the most, like let's say the, <clears throat> the small was selling for fifteen ninety nine, but everything else is selling for thirteen ninety five. Well, then I would I could just get the small if I wanted to, um, so on and so forth. And then you could click the small, and then see are there other sellers? There's nine other sellers, and then I can go and check out. Okay, there's only two selling it for fourteen. 
one selling it for you know three of them for fifteen ninety nine. So you can see that um, how many people you would actually be competing against and all that kind of stuff. Um, and and again, this is all just bouncing right right in through Scan Genie. Um, last thing is if I did buy it, let's say I bought uh, four of them and I bought them for four dollars and ninety seven cents and I bought them from Walmart. I would just hit save and that profit shares if you were jump paul explain that really quick that's if you were um had shoppers that would get a certain percentage right well yeah if you, if you pay your shoppers a percentage of profit uh then the shopper that's logged into scan genie here would see what their profit share is now uh, you are probably set up for 100 percent profit so that's showing you all of your profit but um, yes so that is correct. And yeah. so you could hit save on this. If I hit save, then I can go back into the desktop version of Scan Genie and log in and I can export that list, that buy list, um, which is actually quite helpful, especially when um, the receipt does not match um, what you what you purchased. So like we've been in stores before where we'll buy something and the um, the price tag the price on the tag does not match the price on the receipt. So like we'll buy it, like the price on the tag might say fifteen ninety nine, but we actually bought it for nine ninety nine. Um, and it just so happened that the discount was taken at the register, but then there's no UPC codes to match on the receipt. And so it can get to be a big mess, which is why it's always helpful to, to have that buy list function there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead um, back over to the, uh, the jumpsuits. So I'm going to hang out in the clothing section for a little bit. Um, and show you all how we do this with the um, with the Amazon seller app. So let me just go ahead and show you. If I hit scan, so y'all should be able to see. Can y'all see all that? Yep. Awesome. So you see these awesome jumpsuits. Um, we sold the pot load out of these things last year, but all of these that I'm looking at at the moment are all new. Uh, varieties. So um, I'm going to go ahead and anything in my mind that's Jack Skellington is going to sell. Um, I don't know, John Paul or Tony, have y'all sold much of that? Yeah, we sold a lot of uh, the inflatables from Walgreens. Jack's yeah, awesome. <laughs> so I'm going to actually type these in. So just let, let me actually just show you. So if I was to just come around and scan these, these are all like Walmart. Um, oh, can y'all still hear me, see me? I can see your screen. Okay, great. So let's just say I scanned it and I was like, ah, no products found, lame. Let me go to Seller Central. And we could, you know, the image capture on something like this really wouldn't work, um, especially since, since there's so much Jack Skellington stuff out there. So if we look at, and I'll just show you really quick, um, I don't want it to scan this, but it, it's going to. Um, it says Union Suit Skellington. Um, more than, and it says Walmart.com. So more than likely, again, when people are building these listings on Amazon, they're using different UPC codes and changing them up. So um, these are actually uh, called Briefly Stated is the name of the brand. And it's, um, I'm just going to do Jack. So less is more with, uh, with Amazon search. Um, so this is, I'm pretty sure this is it right here. So here's what I would do to confirm and to also go gather Keepa data. Um, I can buy this right now for $19.99. Where's my price at? My price is hiding. I'm pretty sure the $19.98. Um, so what I'm gonna do is click on the title here in Seller Central and it's going to bring me up all of the product details and I'm gonna copy paste this ASIN over to Scan Genie. And go to search, paste, and then it tells me to buy it at 1746, which is a little below my cost, but you'll notice here on this Kiba chart that like we're going into the cold season, right? So you wouldn't expect the sales rank to be super low right now. Um, so if we are looking at the rank just over since like the middle of September, the sales have really increased on this thing. Um, and what we can also do is go and check out last year's data 
or just click all since it's a little helpful. Now we don't get that green line, so we can't actually see uh, the sales rank for whatever reason Keepa is not showing it. Um, but what we can see is that there is a bunch of sellers that came in stock, uh, roughly 20 of them. So what I'm doing isn't just going across the, the graph there at the bottom and seeing that it capped out at about 20 people. And the, a lot of those people sold out. Um, and now uh, it's coming back in stock. So um, we can also check out again all of our data points and see the highest it ever sold for was $49.95. The lowest it's ever been listed for is $19.99. So um, I would definitely get this, um, not just because of the, um, the fact that the, the sales rank meets my parameters at the moment, but I'm also, again, expecting an increase in sales velocity. Um, Tony or John Paul, do y'all have anything to add to that? I agree with you. I probably would buy a few. Cool. Um, and there's actually some really funny looking, like this is a, a cow udder. <laughs> there's Paul, some Paul, I, think you should, I think you should put one of those on and walk around the store in it. So. I, you know what? I, I should. There's one that's, um, they, <laughs> yeah, that would actually be quite humorous. Oh, I'm knocking over hangers. Um, quality assurance. What's that? Quality assurance. <laughs> That's right. So the, let me show y'all really quick. Um, let me just pull up my camera. There you go. Now y'all can see it. So you see where it says briefly stated? That's how I figured out, like, you know, to figure out the brand. I'm looking at Walmart tag. Um, Walmart, like no other UPC code except for this Walmart. UPC code. So um, let me hey, move Paul, these things around. Hold on one second. Um, yep. I'm trying to keep an eye on the chat, but I haven't seen any comments, so I don't know if my chat's actually working. Okay. So if somebody oh, could just, uh, ah, there we go. I got a comment. There you go. <laughs> Everybody's just watching. Um, so really quick, um, I, I was looking at this tag and I was like, what does that B mean? And so anyways, um, briefly stated, that's how I figured out uh, what this was. And so what I did is I went to Seller Central, I went to search, and I did briefly stated. Oop. And just FYI, it's got to be exactly right. It can't be off at all. Otherwise, you're not going to get any results. So um, immediately saw that union suit. Um, so some of these are going to be called onesies. Some of these are going to be called union suits. So why don't we start out with just union suit and this is how I go about finding all the variations that are in front of me. Um, so I can just look at these right now. So like there's uh, a Ted one um, and I was just, actually this one's like right next to me. Um, there's a lion suit. And then what I can do is like search specifically, ooh, there's that rooster one. There was a rooster one that I was looking at earlier. Um, and there's the, you know, that sales rank is like crazy high, but let's just go see this. I would venture to guess that this is a new, uh, stop loading, that this is a new listing. There we go. No. Click your list button. Um, and then click product details and you can grab the ASIN out of there. Product details. Yep. Good. Nope. That is not normally where I go. It's not, it's not letting me copy it for some reason. There it goes. It's because I have weird fingers. So you'll notice there's a lot of copy pasting going on here. That is just a normal part of this. So yeah, you see that keep a chart. And this is again, just showing like the snapshot of three months of data. And so I'm going to go and see, is this a new listing or not? And it's 297 days old. Yeah. And it really hasn't sold that much. So like for this one, this would be something that's like, okay, do I really want to test this or not? Um, the price point on the, this one, I think again, 1998. Um, and I don't think it was actually selling. Oh, it's on for 44. So you could test this one. Um, just to see if uh, see how it would do. 
Um, let me actually go, I'm going to go to the Amazon listing and see if there's multiple sizes. Yeah, so part of the reason is, one, it's merchant fulfilled. So it says ships from and sold by. That's, a, that's one reason, in my opinion, why it's not doing that good. And then another reason is because there's no other variations. So um, one of the things that you could do is find the other variations and merge them all in together, and then the sales velocity would increase. Um, and that's really not, not too terribly hard to do. Um, it's also a very, I'm sorry, it's also a very poor listing. There's no description or bullet points or anything. Yeah, yeah. So that goes to show why, why it's not doing well compared to uh, the Jack Skellington or maybe the TED2 that I was looking at earlier. Um, so, oh, and did I mention, I did talk about restrictions earlier, right? Yeah, I did. So again, it goes straight to uh, to show me that I am ungated in there. All right, so I'm gonna go move over to um, kind of the the toy area. I'm gonna walk back over to. Um, well, I'm just gonna walk around and I'll scan some stuff. How does that sound? Cool. Sure. Um, here's some. Find some gold. Yeah, I just found some hats. So again, you see how we have the um, the Walmart. UPC code. If there is a, and specifically the Walmart, if there's a different UPC code, then that is helpful. So this hat is, I could buy for six ninety seven. Um, so again, it, it's suggested to buy it at four four forty three. Um, but you know, you would make two dollars fifty cents on that sale. This one's on clearance. No products found. This one says buy it at three eleven. And again, it's telling me to buy it at that price point because of the really high, um, you know, these aren't super fast moving products. So it's, it's the slower the product, the higher the return on investment that I want to make. Hey, Paul. Yep. How would you pack those hats? Would you just polybag them or are you afraid of them getting smashed? Or? Uh, no, I would polybag them. And then whenever I would like, let's say I ended up buying like five of these, um, I would stack them in, you know, tighter together and then more than likely there's going to be other clothes or whatever on the shipment and I'll pack those around um, in the box and just make sure they don't move you know the main thing is making sure the bill doesn't get destroyed um, right. so no I've we've probably bagged hundreds and hundreds of hats um, so no it's they're, they're very easy to do nice. um, I'm in one of my favorite parts of the store and that is the toddler pajamas um, so again, uh, Walmart, you, you sometimes the, uh, the UPC codes don't match up, but, um, you know, for those of you that are gated on like PJ masks or Mickey mouse, um, or any of these licensed things, Walmart also has all of these other just like random, um, non-licensed pajamas that they sell. So let's see if any of these will, these look fairly new. Um, but you know, it's five bucks. Oh, and this is a brand new listing. Looky, looky. Um, so this, you notice it's showing no image available and it's also saying that the rank is too high. Uh, part of the reason is because it's a new listing and let me show you why I know that. Um, if we go to Keepa, nope, that's not, that was the wrong one. Keepa. you'll see that this is only 23 days old. So for listing that's only 23 days old, this really isn't that bad. Um, that's actually quite, quite decent. Uh, but you'll notice that the number of offers coming in, um, it's the September 10th, it was one, and now it's up to four sellers. So let's see how many of those are prime. Uh, let's see, actually. Uh, it's not going to show me that at the moment if they're prime or not, but I would imagine that all of them are. Let's go to Amazon. So I'm going to look at, again, look at the sizes. So when a listing is properly built, it should have all the sizes on it. Um, so again, what I was talking about with the different sizes. So there's a 2T, a 3T, a 4T, and there should be a 5T as well. We could have that variation if we wanted to, but the 4T is selling for $24.99. So um, I would then select that one. But notice that I scanned the one on, I scanned the 2T, but not the 4T. 
and of course there's only 140 <laughs> but that's all right and right there it says sold by uh, top deals for you and fulfilled by Amazon so we know that that is an FBA product um, so it seems definitely like the uh, unicorns are in definitely um, very trendy I s yeah super trendy um, so this wonder nation that is Walmart's brand and you might be wondering okay well how would how would I prep this um, what I would actually do is this uh, price tag is man skin you need <laughs> scanners too good um, <laughs> This is perforated right here. So I would take that 497 off. And um, you, know, you still have the Walmart portion, that uh, satisfaction guarantee, that's Walmart's symbol. And I don't see Walmart anywhere else on there. So um, we would probably just leave that as is and then put it in a poly bag and go from there. But we would take that price tag off though. Are so all let's of check them it out. Perforated like that, or, or so, I was thinking we had some. No, so. so like this particular one, that's uh, it says seven forty four. That price is like marked on there, so we would cover that up um, on this My Little Pony thing. So I just scanned the nine month on this one. Let's scan a different one. Twenty four months, so those aren't popping up. Um, <laughs> So a lot of these, again, these are going to be, um, some of these might be restricted for you, but some of them might not. You just, you never know. You got to check. Um, so let's see here. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Um, hey, so I can on. buy this for $7.44. Let's go look at Keepa and check it out. More than, again, a lot of these are new. It doesn't even tell me. <laughs> it doesn't give me any data at all. Number days. Wow. <laughs> this might be like brand spanking you get, new. You get hours of data on that one. <laughs> yeah. I know. Seriously, one minute ago. That's literally what it says. <laughs> that's that's got us um, old though to have a, a rank of one hundred twenty nine thousand. So it, it did. Well, yeah, yeah. There is a there is a dip there at the very end. There is. It's a tiny dip. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a pretty big dip. But. Uh, it is a big dip. It's a yeah. big, so I don't know how many they bought, but yeah, um, yeah so um, you do need to check out your Keepa, but again, that buy at is showing me seven ninety. Somebody bought this for $21.10. Let's go to Amazon and we'll see if there's other variations. Yeah. That's a great tip on, uh, you know, going to Amazon to look at the variations and seeing the prices though. That, that's, uh, that's very nice. It, it saves so much time and um, I mean again it's like if you scan something and it's like oh the margin isn't very good but then you go and look at these average like right now there's no 3t so there's a two a four and a five and I got I got a couple three T's right here in front of me and I could add that 3t on there and list it for 21.99 um, instead of matching that 18.99 um, so let's go ahead I'm gonna I'm gonna keep walking. Um, any any suggestions on uh, on what you want to see scanned? Tony, you have any, any thoughts going. of where you should go to next? Um, you're doing a good job so far. Uh, I went through all those pajamas you looked at and um, had a hard time finding the listings. I guess because the pajamas are so new for the season. Yeah. So, would you go back and recheck that section? Yeah, I would. I, I definitely would. So like a lot of these little um, sleepers aren't showing up. Um, this is what I'm looking at here. These little Disney, a bunch of different types of sleepers. Um, and I wouldn't expect them to write right out the gate, but let's see if we can, um, might be able to image capture some of these or um, let's see this uh, blanket sleeper. Uh, I'm probably going to get a bunch of random stuff let's just do this blanket sleeper let's see if we get anything nope not yet somebody's gonna make that listing though so just the you know, black friday tip um all of this these pajamas or a lot of the pajamas are gonna go on like a super deep discount um so I would nice. definitely keep those um, in the back of your hat. We made a lot of money last year off of uh, pajamas at, on Black Friday. Um, 
I like those ones that come already folded up. You just throw them in a poly bag. Yes. Yeah, those are really nice. <laughs> yeah, these you do have to remove the hangers um, and, uh, and do a little bit of tag work. But, uh, you know, so this is a, um, a PJ. I would imagine this is going to keep selling past uh, Halloween. But, um, man, look at that sales rank. So you can see, like, September 1, these things came out, and then just boom, out came the sales. And you'll see that, that Keepa chart just, um, just drop. Right. So don't feel like you have to be the one that makes all these listings. This has only been on Amazon for 37 days and it is just like blowing it out of the water. Um, so, um, always, always be checking this stuff. Um, all right, I'm going to get out of close. I'm going to go check out, uh, let's see if we can find like some video games or, but yeah, so, clothing in Walmart. Go ahead. I'm sorry. There's a question in the group about, um, them going on sale for black Friday. You're talking about Walmart. So you buy them on yeah. sale at Walmart. Do you see a corresponding drop in price on Amazon? No, not necessarily. I mean, we're a long ways away from Black Friday. Um, so, I mean, a lot of the PJs and stuff, um, I mean, yeah, you, you know, you might see some drop, but, um, you know, again, with retail arbitrage, there's only so much out there. So um, it might get flooded for a little bit and then bounce back or, you know, early bird gets the worm, so get your stuff in first. So I have a personal um, question. We sent in some of these pajamas, and now we're down to like three dollars profit. Should we yeah. like hold our repricer up until the price will it rebound? Do you think? That would be a. Um, you would just have to search to see um, is there um, how much inventory do other people have. So the app that we use is called How Many. Uh, to figure that out, and there's some other uh, Chrome extensions, not app, I'm sorry, I meant to say Chrome extension, it's called How Many, um, but there's other Chrome extensions that give you the inventory levels of other sellers, and so what I would do is see, okay, how many, uh, how many units do the other sellers have at a certain price point, and how long will it take them to sell out? Does that make sense? Right. So what it would take is, what I would do is go to uh, the listing, or go to Jungle Scout, and see what is the um, what is the sales velocity now? If you're going into the holiday, it's only going to increase, um, but you only have so many more days until the holiday, right? Like let's say it's Halloween pajamas. Um, right. uh, so you would have to see, okay, do people have a hundred units? Do they have ten units? So on and so forth. Um, and and it's kind of hard to gauge because it's going to you know people will come in stock, people will come out of stock. Um, my personal take on that is to get in and get out um, just because I've been burned too many times on holding and waiting um, and that's just it's a lot of research to do but again you, you definitely can yeah. do that research um, for sure does that does that make sense oh yeah I'm probably just gonna take the three dollars and maybe not buy anymore yeah yeah that's that's what I would do um, so I'm just I'm checking out some random video games and uh, it's saying the rank is too high because You'll see there on the keep it chart there's only a few dips um, so something like this you know if, if I could buy it for I don't know like three bucks or five bucks I would um, just because I can uh, I could drop the price and get my margin that's the same thing I just scanned twice um, so um, let's go ahead I'm pretty sure so like this kind of stuff like the wow so Amazon's on this listing. Let's talk about competing with Amazon for a minute. Um, Tony and John Paul, why don't y'all give me your, your thoughts? Do y'all compete with Amazon? Do you care about them? We compete with Amazon all the time. I, I don't yeah. really, didn't really bother me. Cool. I did learn a tip about calculating about how many sales you can expect to make. If Amazon's on the listing, I divide my number of possible sales in half. Like take half the sales and then the other FBAers may take the other half and then I divide however many other sellers there are with me in the mix and I kind of use a formula to figure out how many I should buy. Right. Um, I guess it depends on, you know, uh, you know, how many you are going to try, uh, try to buy. If you've got one of the items, then yeah, I don't have any problem. You know, one or two of them, it's not going to really matter if it, you know, if it takes a little bit longer for it to sell uh, against Amazon. But, you know, if it, if you were, wanting to buy 50 of something, then, you know, if Amazon's on a listing, that might, might not work out so well. So, um, it depends on what the scale of it is too. Gotcha. And how many other sellers are there yeah. too. You know? but, I mean, One of my biggest factors is price point. 
you know, um, like on this particular product, this is HP ink. I can't sell HP. Um, so, um, but you know, on this particular one, Amazon all day, every day is selling this for forty nine eighty nine. Um, but right now I can actually buy this for 10 bucks. So I could take this to eBay, uh, if I really wanted to. Um, but, um, you know, let's say I could compete with Amazon on this, then I'd, I would certainly buy this because I mean, I've got so much room to drop in my margin. Um, and I'll just keep dropping, dropping, dropping price against Amazon until they don't care anymore. And they just, they'll stop, they'll stop dropping prices. Um, and so one of the reasons why I do that is because um, of exactly, Tony, what you just mentioned, the buy box share. Like, you know, you're just, it's just not going to be as normal or, at, you know, it's not near close to what it's like if you're competing with other FBA sellers. Um, so that, that's my kind of my take on competing with Amazon. Um, the, other, the other times that I don't compete with them is if, let's say I scan something and they just went out of stock, like, I don't know two weeks ago or a month ago, if I look at Keepa been in stock for the last 11 months, um, more than likely I'm not going to buy that product. Um, again, unless I can make money selling below their existing price. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. There's gotta be room for Amazon to drop the price because typically they will. Yeah, room for them to drop their price. And not only that, and what's gonna happen if they come back in stock and my buy cost, is the same as their selling price, um, you know, then you're stuck. So, um, yeah, that's where, where a lot of that comes from. So I'm going to, I'm working back over to the store, to the side of the store where there's like the toys. Um, I'm not going to dig into the toys right now. Um, but what, you know, there's, there are quite a bit of clearance toys in this Walmart at the moment. Um, but you can certainly, um, do some research and find, um, find toys that are selling at normal everyday prices. Um, so just FYI, if you haven't been to Walmart lately, they already have um, all of their, all of their Christmas stuff. Check the halls. Um, so um, here's some clearance toys actually right here. And not just toys, there's a lot of other stuff too. So like here's, what is this, the shirt? Let's see if any of this stuff comes up. So it says minimum profit can't be met. No, the price, not. Price is too low. Let's, yeah. Let's see some of this stuff. Yeah, again, my minimum profit is $5, so that's why I'm getting that here. So this I could buy for seven bucks. Um, but I wouldn't again because I would only make like a dollar twenty-seven. It's got a nice active uh, graph there, though. So. It did. It's it definitely did. selling well. But uh, it sure is. It's kind of odd how it didn't sell well in the in that Walmart. So you know what's really nice is whenever you can, um, whenever you get to stand next to the person that has the power to mark things down and just like hand them stuff and say, "Hey, can you bring this down three bucks?" So that's, that's a good, a good tip is when you're in your Walmart, um, that there are managers around, um, that are in control of, they, like they're given so much money to discount prices with. So like, um, like this particular product is seven bucks. Um, but let's say I needed to buy it at five for it to make it, um, worth my, you know, buying and taking it home. Well, I can say, Hey, can you mark this down two bucks? And I've actually been in situations like that. At Walmart, it's like I was literally scanning right next to the girl that was just like, "Oh yeah, I'll take two bucks off that. I'll take three bucks off that," and uh, and then she ran out of money. She's like, "Sorry, that's all I got." <laughs> and I was like, "Well, I appreciate that." Um, so, do you think so, they have like a, a a daily quota they can uh, they can give away, or I mean, you have, you have any idea how that works? It's it's something like that. Um, it, it's like, uh, I yeah, I. They have a budget. I mean, it's like a week or daily or however long, like whenever they're doing clearing shelves for the new toys to come in during Christmas, they've got like, you know, 500 bucks that they can knock stuff off of where there may be, a, you know, a hundred bucks or something like that. Um, let's look at this product. Uh, I can buy for six bucks and there's nobody selling it. It's currently unavailable. Um, so what do you do when something is out of stock? 
I'm gonna go to Keepa and see what kind of data we got and look at some price points. Because at the moment I can buy for $6 and they were selling this originally for $7.98. So it's really not a very big um, decrease, but it's only been on, so there's only eight days worth of data. There's really not much to go off of. But what we can look at is to see what did they sell it for? $19.97. Um, that's crazy high for a cup. <laughs> um, but what, what we can do, do though is then test this product. We would be the only seller of this. Um, obviously need to make sure that we're not restricted. Ooh, let's see if we can request approval and get auto approved. So this is how you go and request approval. <laughs> hey, and you are a winner. And we should like carry around a cowbell whenever you go to Walmart. <laughs> Start ringing the cowbell. Hey, I'm approved. Have y'all noticed that uh, you seem to be uh, restricted in more things than you were last year? But you can get auto approved in them, you know, right. pretty easily. Uh, yeah, yeah, I have noticed that. Yeah, so stuff stuff that we we sold last year. I mean, uh, are restricted now, but I mean, we can get auto approved in them. So I mean, it's uh, I don't really get the the point of that. But um, anyway, some of the newer yeah. sellers. They're not going to get the approval, so no. it doesn't really affect us necessarily. But right, right, yeah, I, yeah. I'm not sure what uh, you know metrics they're looking at, or or you know where that uh, you know auto automatic approval process comes from. But I mean, I know there are some some newer sellers though who are still getting auto approved on some things too. So it never hurts <laughs> to uh, you know go push that button though, because you know it's easy. no, it's easy, it's quick, and you know you might get uh, you know uh, automatically approved, and you might not. But I mean, it doesn't hurt to push the button so yeah, yeah you want to push it <laughs> yeah don't, you should always well i was just going to say the same thing you just were just uh, push that button every time and uh and see and and no and don't like if you push it if you if you go to request approval and it's like no you're not approved um next week you might get it you just you never know mm -hmm. um, and whenever you go to request approval and you get de declined it actually creates a draft that you can go back to again i did this last year when everybody was saying oh auto approval is turned on so i went to my drafts and i just clicked you know request 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 all the way down the list and i got like 50 of them so awesome yeah. that so uh, like last year uh, my wife uh, we went out and found a you know a list of the uh, restricted brands which it isn't you know, a correct list or anything, but it's something to work uh, to to start with, though. And she sat in the recliner in the living room, watched TV, and you know, went through and clicked the button <laughs> over and over That's again. Awesome, got us approved in like you know a hundred brands. So, because you never know when they're going to take that away. The yeah. auto calls. So yeah, so if you hear about it, and we'll um, we'll definitely be keeping y'all posted on it if it comes up. So I, I was just showing a, a screen of, um, or showing y'all what was in front of me, which is all of these holiday time inflatables. So for those of you that are gated, and even those of you that are ungated to sell Nike and Adidas, I mean, um, Walmart branded products sell on Amazon. It just, it happens all the time. Uh, so what I did, holiday time is the name of their, uh, of their Christmas brand. Um, and so we'll see, uh, a lot of these little inflatables and different things pop up. Um, and I actually am already seeing a lot of the, um, a lot of new designs. There's a unicorn, there's a llama, there's, um, there's a few different ones, but, um, but just to give you an idea, you know, like, so this is a gingerbread one. Um, if you could find this more than likely, I like, I haven't seen this design. So more than likely people bought these on clearance last year and they're just sending them back in. Um, so this is selling for thirty nine ninety five, and you can buy it for fifteen bucks from uh, from Walmart. Um, and so what you can do is just, you know, this is kind of the reverse sourcing thing where you can just type in a a brand like this, and then go and see what all is showing up. So I just searched this in ScanGenie, uh, and ScanGenie's um, John Paul. Do you want to explain that the master behind the the API thing? No, what um, was the what was the question? Oh, well, um, I was, um, how would Scan Genie and any other third party app can only return so many results? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, well, uh, for whatever reason, uh, Amazon's API that, uh, you know, Scan Genie and uh, if you have uh, um, 
inventory labs, uh, Scoutify app or any of the other sourcing apps, they all use Amazon's uh, published API that, uh, and for whatever reason, uh, Amazon put a, a 10 item limit on uh, how many uh, uh, products can be returned from a, a search. So, uh, you know, if you're, if you're trying to type in uh, a name of something, so if, it, if you scan it and the barcode doesn't match or anything like that, uh, if you type it in, the, the most results you'll get back are 10 because that's only as many as they'll get back. The, uh, but their Amazon's own seller app though, doesn't have that restriction. So uh, it's kind of a, a good place to go to if you're wanting to uh, do textual searches because you can get back more results. Yes. So uh, can somebody tell me what's wrong with the title on this listing? It says Walmart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's not good. Yeah, nobody's going to buy that uh, if they read the title, um, you know, but uh, no, when, if you create a listing with a product that is only found at Walmart, you should not put Walmart. Well, yeah, and that's not the brand anyway. The brand is holiday time. So I, mean. I will tell you, they've been changing the listing process. Um, I've created a few listings I, and I know that there's a place where you put your title. And so maybe they put holiday time inflatable Christmas unicorn. And then sometimes Amazon will throw your manufacturer right in front of your title when they make your listing for you. So, Interesting. yeah. Okay, good to know. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm pretty sure they've got the Boston Terrier. So this is again, last year's model. Um, and they've got, I haven't seen this one yet. Yeah, so let me show you what the new Boston Terrier looks like. Um, but this just to show you that people are into this stuff. Um, that's the Boston Terrier, and let's see if it pops up. I don't think it's going to. And the Airblown Inflatables is the, see right there where it says Airblown Inflatables? Um, all right, let me ask, let me actually show you this really quick. Um, so this is the, this is the old, um, or this is the new style for this year. So there's going to be a listing made and stuff. But let's talk about prep real quick for this particular product. So. Um, Walmart has gotten really creative with their boxes. So this says um, where this is supposed to be at. Um, so you would, you, you may or may not, I don't know if y'all would cover that up. John Paul, would you cover is, up that I-7? Is that just the, what is that? I haven't seen that before. That is a, um, a way to identify, I think, where it's located or something like that. It says like match this letter. So I'm not sure. Mm. I don't know. It's no, supposed to match it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't really cover that up now. But um, you got the walmart.com here on the back and you got the price point all over the place. Um, so you would want to cover all of that up. So that is a little bit of work, but um, you know, you could just get some, you can print the ASIN sticker 15 times if you have to, to put it on there or um, y'all, you know, we, I actually got some uh, holographic stickers one year and put those on there. Um, uh, what what would y'all do, Tony uh, or John Paul, to cover that up? Well, that's the first year I've seen it uh, be printed on every side and on the top. So um, I'm pretty sure it was like that last year. I thought I've been wrong maybe, before, though. I was thinking it was just on the front, but maybe maybe it was like that. We would probably take our thirty up stickers and kind of make a double layer and just cut them to fit that that area and cover that up. We'd probably. Yep. And we also bought these black circle stickers that we're using on our Halloween inflatables. So we just black circle sticker over the price and it looks fine. Awesome. All right. So here's a toy soldier. Um, so I see a toy soldier in front of me again, details. You got to pay attention to, to all of the, um, the fine details of does it actually match the, the product. Now here's something else um, that you need to confirm is to make sure that the photo that shows up here on this listing actually is the photo on Amazon. And the way that I do that is um, you could open up the Amazon app, but again, I like to go to Keepa and, or go to uh, Scan Genie so I can look at Keepa and just make sure that that photo matches. So let me show you the toy soldier. So get a good look at that toy soldier. Let me show you the one that I'm looking at. 
So it's a little bit different. So I would not send that product in under that listing. Um, so I would look for the exact listing. And just an FYI, if I started scanning all of these again, more than likely a lot of these are not gonna show up. This one's new, a Corgi. Anybody <laughs> like Corgis? So, you know, don't just go based off of scanning those. And then another thing that you can do um, for the search, you go to Amazon and I'm gonna type in holiday time, inflatable bundle, I already typed it in. Oh, so, Mickey and, yeah. Mickey, Mickey and Minnie, there's a polar bear and a penguin. There's the three dogs. Again, these are, these are last year's inflatables. Look at how much, 150 bucks. <laughs> um, ooh, let's That's see a Halloween we, one too. That is a Halloween one. Let's go see if we can find it. I think I sold <laughs> some of those last year. Sold some of these exact ones? Something like that. It was a Mickey Mini bundle. All right, so I'm, I'm kind of like, I'm, whenever I'm in a, in a store like Walmart or just sourcing, I get this, this walk about me. You ever seen the, uh, the lady doing her speed walk and she, her hips move really fast? That's me. <laughs> That's me when I'm walking into Walmart and I'm scanning, <laughs> especially on Black Friday. My head's uh, on a swivel. I'm just like distracted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Ooh, and there's, a, so there's some other Thanksgiving stuff here that I'm, I'm also going to sell. Uh, or not sell, but scan. Um, all right, going to the inflatables. They've got a lot of their own little varieties. All right, let's see if I can find it. Uh, Lowe's and Home Depot have a bunch of these Disney inflatables too. They do. Um, Tar Target has a bunch of inflatables now too, or that we saw. So it here. looks, it looks like Airblown Inflatable is the. Um, Let's do this. Here's a specific one, but that's being sold for 89 bucks. Now, did you go back over to seasonal or are you back in lawn and garden? I am in uh, the seasonal section in Walmart. With Is the that Christmas? what you're asking? Yeah. No, I'm I'm not in the Christmas section. I'm in the Halloween section now. Okay. Okay. Um, so this particular one uh, was selling for twenty eight eighty eight. That's pretty high. Um, I'm gonna look at some uh, some Thanksgiving since we're so close to Halloween. I don't really want to mess with that too too much. But I mean, let me just show you. I mean, you'll probably know this, um, but like, look at all of these costumes. My goodness. Um, so we could spend a lot of time scanning these costumes. Um, and, and one tactic that you could do is if you found something and let's say you're not comfortable with sending it in to, um, to Amazon um, and like you're afraid that it's not going to make it, then you could, here's Chewbacca, you could uh, potentially um, just merchant fulfill it. And if it doesn't sell, then you could possibly just return it. There were some Chewbacca onesies that I sold last year that did awesome. It's a pretty legit Chewbacca mask. <laughs> I might really get good. that for myself. What's that? You, you're going to get that for yourself? Yeah. Yeah, I want to see you walking around in that. So. <laughs> Chewbacca. <laughs> um, all right, I'm going to do Thanksgiving since that stuff is um, more relevant. So, and Paul, when, when do you stop sending Halloween stuff in? I was thinking like 10 days. Is that... It yeah, I mean, it, it just depends on, you know, how many units you're sending in of something. Um, so, you know, it, it, you could send it in, um, yeah, 10 days or so. Um, depends on your checkout time, your check-in time and all that. You know, if, if it takes uh, six days to check in, um, you know, you got, you got a few more, a few more weeks probably. Um, but you just got to, again, be careful because if you buy too late, ship it in, it gets held up, whatever, then, then you're kind of stuck. Um, so, but right now is, is a, a, you could definitely stop sending in stuff, but you got to be careful. Like right in October 1, you can send in chocolate. So, um, 
that would be something that to look into. Let me go ahead and keep scanning this. John Paul, you want to talk about your your um, title search? Sure. Is, is that actually what that thing you you scan? No, it's not, but it's close. Okay. It's not. Well, uh, this is one one feature that the uh, pro version of uh, Scan Genie has is that uh, uh, we have a, a database of uh, several million uh, UPC codes and uh, and different other information about them, titles and and if ASINs that they match to them and all. Uh, so if you scan an item that uh, is in our database, but uh, the UPC doesn't match what the UPC is on uh, on Amazon, we can still get some uh, pull up some of those uh, those products automatically. So, um, so you, you know, even if you scan that with the the Amazon Seller app, it won't come up, but you might actually be able to get it come up in Scan Genie. So, it keeps you from having to type a few things in sometimes. So. It does, and really, I've found it to be super helpful with uh, with clothes. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's great on clothes because there's lots of clothes out there that's, that aren't listed under the. It is. Things. All right, so I'm going to see if I can find. You can, also, would you can also Go sometimes ahead. find those, uh, you know, those holiday time or you know other in-store brand things too that are that aren't listed under the UPC. Yes, it, it, it will work sometimes for that. Let's see if this is a brand way to celebrate. So Walmart's like constantly coming out with um, different. I saw one. I saw What's table. That? I saw table. Mm -hmm. Let's see. This white one. Oh, the one right above it said table cover. I didn't see the grumpy cat or whatever that is. <laughs> that is a grumpy cat. <laughs> it's only selling for five twenty eight. Oh. Um, all right, I'm gonna get out of this section, and I actually. I got to to close off here in a moment. Um, I'm actually, I'll tell you what, I think I'm going to be done scanning here because I feel like I, I represented Scan Genie well, hopefully. Um, yeah. And, and so I you, have you a, some uh, other, other tips as well, that, you know, regardless of Scan Genie, I mean, it's good, good stuff. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, no, I mean, I could really stay in here for the next like eight hours. <laughs> and. <laughs> The only reason why I would uh, go home is because my wife is saying, uh, where are you? Uh -oh. <laughs> you? You have a beautiful little girl to have to go get home to. Well, I guess I, I, I got a, a couple of them, I guess, but I mean. Yeah, I have a second one. Um, I do. No, I love my kiddos. Um, so yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk out to my, my truck. Um, so uh, John Paul, do you want to talk about um, the uh, the deals group, or uh oh, did we lose you? Paul? I I don't know if we actually talked about we're going to transition out of scanning. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, well, I mean, Paul has a uh, for for y'all um, doing uh, uh, RA the, uh, during Q4 now. Uh, Paul has a uh, a Q4 group that uh, he's uh, he's running that. Uh, has some great deals that they're putting in there all the time. Uh, they, they've got new new deals coming in every day, uh, and and after uh, October kicks in, uh, say, hey, is everybody still there? <laughs> Am I by myself now? I, I'm here. <laughs> what happened? Oh, okay, okay. Thought I lost it. Oh, did we lose Tony? No, I'm here. Oh, okay, okay. Are anyway. our participants still in here? Yes, yes. We still have people. So great. What? What? Oh. You have to stop moving around, Paul. You're, uh... Yeah. Well, I think the deals group is great. Um, I'm actually, I'm in there. I'm a contributing member. And um, September is kind of like the bonus month. Uh, all the real deals are going to start in October. So everything that's being posted now, I'm not posting every day, but there is there's content almost every day. There's people asking really great questions and getting answers from seasoned sellers and I'm learning a lot and contributing a lot of what I know to the group. And um, I just, I think it's really great. And it's just going to get better once we move into October and we start seeing those massive deals coming out. I think we're supposed to get, how many months are we supposed to get? Like 200? 200. And we'll, we'll be giving over 200 deals, deals a month. Um, so yeah, Tony, I, I just missed you a little bit of what you were just saying. Um, but you were talking about, um, the, the deals group 
just explaining it. Right. Um, yeah. So, so in the deals group, um, we, sorry guys, this is like super choppy. I don't know what was happening with the connection. Um, okay. so, um, yeah, so we're going to be providing over 200 deals a month. Um, but not only that, uh, we're also going to be, um, doing a lot of content. So like lots of webinars, um, lots of store specific tips. So like if you walk into a Walgreens, what do you do? You walk into a Walmart, what do you do? Um, what about there's like already a Dollar Tree video that's already up for you. A Dollar Tree video. There's um, some big lots information. Um, there's, a, you know, we're going to keep continuing to, to tack on to all of like the store specific stuff. Like if you walk into a Starbucks, um, what do you do? Like, are there discounted gift cards? Are there, um, you know, tips on how do you talk to managers, all kinds of stuff. Um, and so, you know, it's really this constant Q and a going on. Um, and so the deals, you know, definitely that that's one of the big things that kind of is different about our group is you have professional Amazon sellers. Tony's one of them. I'm one of them. And then we have, um, four others that are also posting deals, um, and that are, everybody's kind of scattered throughout the country. So we have regional and national stores that are posting those deals too. It's not just Walmart or big lots. We do in TJ Maxx, um, Marshall's we're doing, you know, they'll probably be like office Depot, home Depot, Lowe's, all, all kinds of stores. So we're really not, um, posting deals to just a, a couple stores. It's going to be from all over the place. Um, and lots of just great tips and tricks. So if you're new or if you've been a veteran, um, there's definitely going to be something in there for you. Um, Tony, you want to add anything to that or John Paul? Well, there's lots of uh, questions being asked in the group too. And, uh, you know, y'all are giving some, you know, great information and great tips, uh, about, uh, and answering people's questions. So, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, okay. I'm going to do something. I'm going to shut my video off. Um, just because, um, I'm going to drive. So I'm listening. Um, and the only reason I'm driving is because I promised my wife that we would be on a date tonight at uh -oh. six o'clock. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> okay. Hey, uh, so, I, I just noticed I hadn't had the uh, Q and a up, I guess. And somebody just asked if how to be part of the group. So, uh, I guess we probably need to answer that. Po um, post your link, buddy. Um, uh, yeah. and I would actually need to have that available when I, you don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it does that. So no, Paul, keep talking, you, and keep talking. Saying, you and I were talking about um probably we were messaging back and forth and we were saying gosh I don't think everybody really understands the value that they're getting in this group and I was kind of thinking like no you're right this isn't we shouldn't just call it deal group this is almost like coaching yeah and coaching that you're getting it's, with what you're paying right and I and I am an I am a coach and that's really kind of it's I'm not going to call it like group therapy, but it's kind of like that where it's just like this, like everybody is jumping in and, and helping one another. And it's not like a, um, you know, people, everybody's willing to share and help. And if you come in, like no question is a stupid question. Um, if you've never sent in your first Amazon shipment, like we'll help you walk through that, you know, like there's, it, I would say it's definitely, even though there's, it's a group, I feel like people um, are getting that kind of one-on-one -on -one touch. Um, where Melissa, you, you, Melissa knows the value. Thanks, Melissa. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, good. Okay. Um, I, oh, sorry, Paul. Uh, I, I, just posted, I just posted the link uh, in the, uh, the chat. Um, but uh, I also want to let everybody know, though, that uh, if you do sign up uh, uh, for Paul's group, uh, I'm going to be giving away a, uh, uh, a three month, uh, free of scan genie so that you can uh, play with scan genie throughout Q4 and, uh, you know, uh, you can, you can test it out completely free. And if you don't want it at the end of, end of, uh, the, uh, the uh, three months, you can turn it off. That's fine. Uh, but, uh, any, anybody that signs up though can uh, get that th uh, three months free though. Just an FYI, that's forty dollars a month for typical Scan Genie, and yes. you're using it for the at the absolute best time of the year um, <laughs> to to really put it to work. Um, and and this is going to be recorded, so you'll get to actually go back and watch this if you need to, and see okay, what did he click on and all that. And um, and in the group, there's actually a video on how to set up Scan Genie 
as well. Uh, so you could go ahead and watch that, um, that little tutorial there um, on Scan Genie. So John Paul, thanks so much for giving, giving that away, man. That's awesome. Hey, no problem, yeah. And, uh, you know, at some point in time, if you, if you want to, we could uh, do a little, uh, um, you know, how to set up Scan Genie and kind of something like that you know, inside the group too, as well. So if you want yeah, to that would be great. Have a little and just to, time. just, just to let you all know why Scan Genie is my, my favorite app. It's not just because I like John Paul. I actually don't like him that much. To be honest. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> I, I thought you were my friend. <laughs> we are. Um, so it uh, it actually blew my business up because I was kind of like a solo, you know, guy. Just I was doing all my scanning, and then I got a little bit of help uh, with people um, shipping and, and shopping or shipping and prepping. And um, and whenever I got Scan Genie, I went from just me shopping to like five shoppers in a very very short amount of time, like a month. Um, so I actually got to the point with scan genie where I could just walk somebody into a store and in about three hours have them fairly comfortable scanning on their own. Um, now the advanced keep a training and all of that, uh, came later, but, um, but for the most part they could go and, um, and start finding inventory rather quickly. Um, and so if you're, if you are thinking about a sourcing team, this is definitely the app for that. Um, or if you just want to, you know, like give it to your mother-in-law and be like, Hey mom, whenever you're out, uh, at Walgreens, just scan stuff. And then you can go and look at, actually, I didn't show that John Paul, but, um, you can actually see what your team is scanning. So if you gave the app to, you know, 10 people, you get to actually see the different things that they're scanning, uh, when they scanned it and, and all that kind of stuff. It's some, we didn't, we definitely didn't share all the data points that it, that it produces, but, um, yeah, because it's, yes. it's really easy to go in and, and set up uh, new, um, you know, new sourcers to go out and, and shop for you. Uh, with in the back end, you can set those, all those up. You can give them their own their own little logins, basically, to the app. And then, yeah, like like Paul was saying, you can you can track what uh, you know what they scanned, and uh, you can you know if you're in the store, store together, you know you can see what they're doing and and see what they're um, you know help them out and all. So, um, but. You can also, I mean, you can also uh, change the uh, settings on the back end, you know, even while they're out scanning. So, I mean, we've, we've made changes to uh, our buying criteria while somebody was in the store before, you know, and, you know, they don't have to know anything about it. Um, so, yep. yeah. yeah. And that, and that's actually something that, um, that I'll do as well. I'll change the buying criteria and basically whenever they see the green bar, they get happy, <laughs> they, you know, and I'm, I'm the same way. Um, uh, do, do you want to take any questions real quick? See if anybody has any. Yeah. Uh, uh, anybody want to put any questions in the chat or use the little Q and A feature or wh whichever you want to use, I guess. But anybody have any questions about uh, Paul's group or Scan Genie or Q4 sourcing or anything? Were there some questions posted from earlier or, or no? I think we, kind of went, we went over them as they were being posted. Um, so Great. Taking uh, sandpaper to get those Walmart prices off the box. We are I, trying I've to done that. that. I've done that before, but it still looked kind of. Uh, you had to be really careful. Like I it, think time would be a factor too, right? Yeah, it's, it's yeah. nice and quick and fast to uh, just stick a sticker on there. So you know what? Let me let me backtrack that. We did use sandpaper last year on these massive Santa inflatables. Like the boxes were huge. Um, and the, the kicker was the background behind the price had to be white. And you know, you, you just had to be careful to not go past that, that second white layer, but it did, it did work and somebody would have to really inspect it. Um, but yeah, you could just throw stickers on there just as fast. The question is, is what they take the stickers off. Most people wouldn't, but you never know. Well, you know, those, uh, uh, the Walmart clothes that you, uh, the pajamas you were uh, showing earlier, uh, we've sent in quite a bit of those uh, that have the, the price tags or the price on the, on the tags. And we haven't really done anything to those tags and we haven't any problem. Oh, like the $7 and 44 cents is on the tag and you'll yeah. still send it in. Yeah. Ooh. That, that makes well, me nervous. I guess well, you'll have the random like one person that goes, Hey, I could have went into Walmart and bought this for whatever. Well, I mean, but, I guess, you know, 
you know, what's the worst they're going to do? Send it back. I mean, uh, I mean, they, they could, uh, leave you a uh, seller feedback on that, I guess, but I mean, um, yeah, but you'll get it removed if it was, possibly, if they, yeah. if they left negative feedback about, about the price, definitely a hundred percent had that experience. <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure how much it's, if it's, uh, that's good, good to matter. know though, that you're doing that. Uh, um, Actually, I thought we were doing oh. it because I thought you told us you did it last year. So, I, no, no, that was not. That wasn't me. <laughs> so anyway, um, oh, man, that's funny. no, you're you're providing a valuable service, though. I mean, you're you know they didn't have to go to Walmart to get it. So um, I mean, that is where the, we are the courier of the product. We're just mailman. You got to sit at home in your onesie and and order your pajamas. You know, <laughs> you didn't have to uh, you know get out and uh, go see the Walmart greeter and. <laughs> and uh, go through the cattle line to, to check out. So, yeah. Um, you know, I think that's my most asked question by uh, people that they find out what I do, like my friends and family. And they're like, why would anybody buy your thing? Why wouldn't they just go to Walmart? And I'm like, I stopped trying to figure that out years ago. I don't really know <laughs> why, you know, <laughs> what the reason is, but um, that's okay. Cause as long as they, they buy it, that's all that matters. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, um, any, any other questions popping up? I don't see any. Yes. You, am I missing one or are you, is that? I haven't seen any. Okay. All right. Well, and uh, do you, do you have anything more to add uh, Tony or Paul or? I think no, that's I, just, it. I really believe in the group. I've been in it for a few weeks now, seen some really great stuff come through. We're sharing, sharing really good deals it help anybody's business. Unless you're not going to use it. If you're just going to pay the money and be like, uh, you know, not actually going to do it. Of course, that's not going to help you. But if you're really trying to, you know, make it work, a deals group will, it's a great stepping stone. Absolutely. And one of the things that um, I'll, I'll leave with this, you know, we talk about a deals group and I think when people hear that, they probably most people think like online arbitrage deals, um, you know, where everybody gets a list and everybody goes to the, that website and buys from that list. Um, and some of that will happen, you know, like where you post a deal and everybody's going to be able to go and find that one particular deal. But with this being retail arbitrage, the deals are not um, able to be accessed by everybody. Like people have to go out to the store to find the thing, uh, typically. So, um, you know, one, not, so, so the deals won't get, get flooded. That, I, that's often a question. Is there a cap on the group and things like that? Um, the deals more than likely if they were, if they're going to get flooded, it's not because it was posted in our group. Trust me. Um, it was, it's because it's just available everywhere. And the other piece with the deals is that I treat them instead of treating them more like a deal, I treat it more like a lead. So for example, how I was just scanning that toddler clothing earlier, you may have walked by that toddler clothing 5 million times and never thought to scan there but if we post a deal that says hey you can go and buy this uh, style uh, toddler clothing um, then then it would behoove you to scan all the other styles that are right next to you um, if that makes sense I, that that's kind of my my take on the on the deals um, but again the content it's like you can get one tip that will more than will pay for um, what you invest in this group so, um, exactly. I think, I think that's all I got. Um, I know my wife is waiting for me to walk into a restaurant right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we better shut this down. So uh, Paul's wife doesn't, uh, didn't try to hurt him. So, uh, <laughs> right. she's, uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. Thanks everybody for coming out tonight. Uh, I'll be, uh, uh sending out a, uh, a link to the, um, to the replay of this here, uh, at least by tomorrow. Uh, and uh, hope you want to uh, join the group. Uh, it's it's a great opportunity, and uh, come come hang out with us. Awesome, awesome. All right, well, y'all have a good night. Thank Goodbye. you. All right, bye. Bye.